Okay, so in this video I'll tell you about double integrals and how to uh, do the integration if you happen to be given a region which is not necessarily rectangular. Okay, so remember from before we have been working with things of this form. So you're given a function of two variables and you want to do the integral of this function over certain region r on the xy plane. So here, so far, uh, the regions uh, we have been working with are these rectangles. And what I mentioned to you is that in practice, if you want to compute this double integral, then you, you just need to use the fact that you can write dA in two different ways, right? So when dA is dy dx, then uh, say this, if this in region is from AD, CD, right? Then you're doing, you're trying to do this integral, and here you put the corresponding bounds. So for x, you go from A to B, and from Y, you go from C to D. And so in particular, what that means is that, uh, remember that you're doing the, the integral in the interior first. So when you're doing this integral, X was fixed. So here you're fixing some value of X, you're, and you're letting Y go from Z to D, okay? So uh, notice that you get this yellow segment, and what will be useful in a second is to think of, of this segment as, say, an arrow that's piercing through this rectangle, and so it enters at the equation Z, Y equals Z, and it exits at the equation Y equals D. Okay, so uh, what you have to think is that after you did this integral, then you get the other integral by letting x vary. So when x starts varying, you get other vertical segments. And so it's sort of, uh, you're starting uh, to move this arrow around. But uh, the point is that you can think of this first order of integration as being one related to the use of vertical arrows. On the other hand, um, there was this second option for doing the double integral, which is uh, dx dy. And in that case, again, you want to write the double integral. And uh, you're doing the integral in the interior first, and so uh, x goes from a to b, and y goes from c to d. Okay, so here, uh, when you do this one, First, uh, y has been fixed, so imagine that you fix the value of y, and then I should have used a different color here, but you are fixing a value of y, and then you're letting x vary uh, from a to b, so you're really considering this horizontal segment, and again, as before, you want to think of this as actually having some sort of orientation. So you imagine that you have like your arrow and now it's per piercing through this side of the rectangle and it's exiting to, through this other side. And so it is entering at the uh, segment that has equation x equals a and it is exiting the region at the equation of the segment which is uh, x equals b, okay? And again, uh, when you have fixed the value of y, 
then you let it vary, which is what's going on when you do the second integral. And so uh, while it starts varying, and you start getting other horizontal segments. And so uh, what I'm trying to say here is that you should think of this double integral as being associated with uh, horizontal arrows. And now what we want to do is apply this concept of the arrows to understand uh, regions where, which are not necessarily rectangular. Uh, so let me do an ex a concrete example so that uh, you see what I'm trying to say. So today makes my case for why it's useful to record before uh, we, we meet since it has been full of technical difficulties uh, like the videos that I have been trying to make. So let me just try to explain again. Uh, well, not again because you never saw this part, but let me explain uh, with an example how the double Uh, integral, integrals are supposed to be done on a non-rectangular non region. So let's say you want to find um, this integral of x, y, the a, where uh, the region of integration is going to be uh, the following. So it's going to be given by three curves. One curve which is y equals root of x another curve which is uh, uh, say y equals 0 and another curve which is x equals 1 okay so here's a region of integration as you can see it's clearly not a rectangle so we can apply the ideas that I was trying to explain before. Let's say you want to make the com try to compute this using the order dy dx. In this case, we're trying to do the following. Let me draw this again From here. point from uh, of the of doing the order dy dx on a rectangular region is that one more time you think of you think first of the integral the, the on, on the inside so for this integral on the inside y is going to vary and x is fixed so imagine that you fix an x which could be here or could be here or could be here and y is going to vary but what are the values that y takes? Well, this is uh, related to this vertical segments that I mentioned before. So in the order dy dx, you are using vertical segments. Okay. The point or vertical arrows. The point is that uh, these vertical arrows, as you can see, no longer have the same uh, length. And so, for example, if this is uh, the value of 0 0.8, this arrow goes uh, from y equals 0, right? It starts at the x-axis, and it would end at y at height y equals uh, root of 0 0.8. On the other hand, if this were like 0 0.2, then this arrow would start at height 0, right? It starts at the x-axis, and then it would end up at height uh, root of 0 0.2. So 
So what I'm trying to say is that you cannot just put like a bound here which is like from 0 to 1 or 0 to 0.5 because the, the depending on which location of x you are the the final heights are different okay so what you can say like there are two things that you can say you can say that regardless of where which value of x you chose right all these pink segments start at the same height so they'll start at uh, the equation x equals zero so you can put here that sorry or y equals zero so you can put here that the initial bound for y is just zero on the other hand the final bound for y is where these arrows pierce through the, the where these arrows exit the region and so notice that they exit through this equation but this equation is y equals root of x so what you're supposed to put here is just y uh, equals root of x and so the, the new change with respect to before is that in this case now the bounds can be in in this uh, now the bounds can depend on x so this means that uh, now one or both bounds uh, can depend on x And then, uh, once you figure that this out, then you have to decide what are the possible values of pink arrows uh, under, for what values of x can you move around these pink arrows. So notice that you can start at x equals zero, and you can start sweeping out this region with the pink arrows until re you reach x equals one. So this goes from x equals zero to x equals one. And so in general, when you see something like, so this is what will happen in the general situation, you'll see something like this. You'll see like a double integral of f of x, y, dy, dx. And now what we are allowing to happen is that uh, these bounds can be functions of x, But these bounds can only be numbers. So uh, here, let me just say bounds can depend on x. And these are just numbers, which are the largest value of x. And this is the smallest value of x. So the smallest value of x on the region R is 0, which is why I'm putting x equals 0 here. The largest value of x on region R is 1, which is why I'm putting x equals 1 here. And so, uh, let's see how this integral is supposed to go. Now, after finding out the bounds, there's nothing new that you have to do. It's the same process as before. Let me just write it again. So you're going to integrate first with respect to y, so you get y squared over 2. that gives you, well, uh, when y equals root of x, you square it, you get x, so you get 0, 1, x times x over 2, and when y equals 0, you get 0, so nothing. And so you're just really integrating x squared over 2, and so that gives you x cubed over 6.
And so this is 1 over 6. So the answer should be 1 over 6 for this double integral. And now let me just show you how this is supposed to go if you use the opposite order of integration. So let's do the order of the x and y, which is going to be related to horizontal segments. So again, let me draw the picture one more time. We have y equals root of x x equals 1, y equals 0, and now I'm going to do the integral, double integral of x, y, dx, dy, that's the difference, right, and what we need to find is what to put in here first, okay, so uh, again, we start with the one on the inside, this means now that x is allowed to, to vary, so you're fixing y. Imagine that you fix a value of y. These are possibilities that you could have chosen. For each of these values of y, there are certain horizontal segments that run through this particular height. So imagine that you have these arrows, they enter through the region and they're uh, entering through the region at, at this curve and they will exit the region through this other curve. Okay, but the point one more time is that these arrows have different heights. So, so you cannot just put a, a uniform number here and here, at least not in general. So for example, just to make things, things a bit more concrete, like if this were uh, height 0 0.9, which is pretty close to 1, then right, the value of x corresponding to this is root of 0. Point, uh, I mean, if, if y equals 0 0.9, you have to solve for x. So you have to square this. So you get 0 0.9 squared. And then the value for uh, that they exit through, which is this point, is just one. Uh, on the other hand, maybe this is like 0 0.3. If this is high 0 0.3, again, uh, if this is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 equals the root of x. So that means that x equals 0 0.3 squared. Okay. And so uh, the value of x at which the arrow begins is 0 0.3 squared. The value of x at which the arrow ends is 1. So what I'm trying to say is that similar to the previous case, all the arrows exit, exit through the same value of x. So that's why the bound for the upper bound for x equals 1. But all the but uh, the arrows do not enter through uh, just part a particular number. They do enter through a particular equation or a particular curve. They always enter through this curve. So if you look at the equation of the curve, which is y equals root of x, that means that x had to be y squared. So what you have to put here is y uh, sorry x equals y squared. And so, just as before, the bounds in this case are allowed to be functions, but now the roles are reversed, and so now the bounds can depend on y. So you, the bounds can always depend on the variable that you're not using. So bounds can depend on y.
And finally, you are allowed to vary these segments. And so this could go from, uh, what's this, this segment? Well, this is a segment when uh, x equals zero, right? Which is uh, the y axis. And then, uh, right. and this is a segment where, uh, sorry, this is a segment where uh, y equals zero, right? That all the points are have height zero. So the smallest value of y equals zero is zero. And the largest value of y, right? So you're moving these arrows. And the largest value of y that you can reach is y equals one. So just as before, when you do the integral in this order, the point is that now uh, x can be a function of y, x can be a function of y. And now uh, outside you put the largest value of y and the smallest value of y. So in this region the smallest value of y is 0, the largest value of y is 1, which is why I'm putting 0 and 1 here. And in this case you have this bounds for, of x in terms of y. And so the bounds can now depend on y. The point is that you have to remember that this involves horizontal segments. And so let's try to see what this integral should give us. So we're trying to do the integral from 0 to 1, from y squared to 1 of x, y, dx, dy. Again, y is like a constant, so you're just integrating x, which gives you x squared over 2, so you get 0, 1, x squared over 2 times y, uh, when x equals 1, x equals y squared. What you get, you integrate against dy. That should give you one half of the integral from zero to one of x squared. Well, when x equals one, you get one squared, which is one, which is y. And then when x equals y squared, you get y to the fourth times y. That's uh, minus y to the fifth. Okay. And so this gives you one half of uh, y squared over two minus y to the 6 over 6 uh, from y equals 1, y equals 0 and this is 1 half of times 1 half minus 1 over 6 which is uh, 1 half times uh, 3, okay, let's see, so 3 minus 1, and this is 2 times 1 half, that's just 1, so this is 1 over 6. So once again, you see, regardless of the order of integration, you get the same answer. So in the next videos, which again, uh, is, uh, they may look a little bit weird just because there were some technical difficulties. The next video, I'll do a, a slightly more complicated example of a double integral on a non-rectangular region. And uh, later in another video, I'll do an example uh, where really only one of the bounds is, one of the orders of integration is practical to use and the other is not very helpful. So that you get like an idea of what variations there can be. And later, once we talk about cylindrical and spherical coordinates, I will tell you how to do uh, triple integrals uh, on non-rectangular regions.